In this video, I'm going to show you how to play around with cluster analysis in SPSS. Cluster analysis is really useful if you want to, for example, create profiles of people. Um, the good kind of profiling. For example, you can see if uh, your employees are uh, naturally clustered around a set of variables. For example, do I have uh, highly educated employees who are married and have been on the job for a long time? Um, are there also divorced, on the job a long time, who uh, have a lot of uh, education? And, and various other uh, clusters. There's a way to explore that here in SPSS, and I'll show you how to do that. You go to Analyze, Classify, and we're gonna use the two-step cluster. And let me just reset this. What you'll do is you'll choose either categorical or and or continuous variables to use as your clustering variables, your indicators. So let's choose, or let's see, um, let's just choose those one we, ones we talked about. Let's go with uh, years and current job. Um, you know, I don't know what marital status means, so let's try uh, years in the firm and education. Oh, these two are probably overlapping way too much. Let me get rid of that one and throw in something like reliability. How about that? Now these are all continuous variables. If I chose something like gender, that would be categorical um, because it, the, the, number, the numeric values in that variable, you can see over here in the gender column, those ones and twos don't actually mean anything uh, numerically. They just mean male, female. Um, so those are categorical variables. Anyway, I'm going to get rid of gender because gender is a swamping variable. There are only two values possible. And so it's very unlikely that I'll end up with more than two clusters unless I force it. Let's go to, in fact, that's a good example. Let's include gender. I also want to include in options, nothing. And in output, I want to see how my clusters, um, what's the word? I want to evaluate them on their productivity and job satisfaction. Now these two variables won't be used to determine clusters, but they will be used as a post hoc, a sort of a afterward analysis, seeing how each cluster rates with regards to productivity and job satisfaction. I also want to create cluster membership variable. What this will do is create a variable at the very end of your data set that shows the cluster membership number for each respondent. So for each row, there will be a value, and that value is the, the cluster number. Essentially, what you can do is you can use that cluster number as a moderation variable in um, other analyses, uh, like, a, like a structural equation model. All right, other things to do on here are to determine the number of clusters we want to see. Well, I don't want to see 15. That's ridiculous. I can't even, I wouldn't be able to figure that out. I think that four is the maximum I want to see. Um, or I could specify that I only want four, but I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to let SPSS determine how many are most appropriate um, number of factors. And then just hit OK. Pull this up here. All right. The only thing that will come out is a model summary. And at first you think, that's it? Ugh. But it turns out uh, you can double click it to get more information. Now, what this says is we had four variables used to compute uh, or to extract clusters, and we only ended up with two clusters. Just like I predicted, I, I figured gender was probably a swamping variable. There are only two values for it, so we're probably going to end up with a cluster of males and a cluster of females, and then all the other variables would be useless. But it says that this, uh, those set, that set of indicators, those four variables, are actually good for clustering. So that's interesting. Okay, I just double-clicked it. I'm going to expand this a little bit. All right, looks like we have uh, the smallest cluster has only 78 members. That's probably fine. Uh, you want to keep probably above 30, 35-ish uh, in your smallest cluster. Although um, it's good, another good rule of thumb, thumb is to keep the ratio under 3. I like under 2. Um, that just means that no cluster in your data, in your cluster set is more than two times as large as any other cluster. We can now look at variable importance. 
So we used gender, education, reliability, and years in the firm to create these clusters. Well, it looks like gender is this swamping variable. The, um, the clusters were created essentially just based on gender. So if we go over here and look at clusters, we'll see that, sure enough, we have uh, gender female is 100%, gender male is 100%. That means everybody in this cluster was male. So it only clustered based on gender. Uh, so this is kind of useless. I'm actually going to go get rid of uh, gender in order to make this more useful. Just close that, rerun the analysis, and get rid of gender. Kaboom, and hit OK. And we end up with three inputs and three clusters. Not a great fit, but it's not terrible. Double click it. Here we are. Smallest cluster is 53, probably OK. The ratio is 2.89, that's under 3. Look at variable importance. Oh, man, another swamping variable. Education. Well, bother. Let's try a different set of variables. It looks like uh, these demographics probably aren't very good for profiling our, um, our employees. So I'm going to try something else. Get rid of these. Let's see about how happy and how productive they are. Productivity and job satisfaction. Now you remember I, we use these as evaluation, so we can get rid of those. I'll throw burnout in here. That's probably a good one. Burnout. Here we go. We can evaluate them based on burnout. Alrighty, there it is. Just these two. That's all I'm going to use. All the other settings are the same. Hit OK. It came up with three clusters. You know, though, I want four. I want a high high, a high low, a low low, and a low high, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to force it. Go back here, specify fixed. I want four clusters. Run it. And looks like the fit is just about the same, so it doesn't really matter. Double click, expand. And here we are. Looks like the cluster sizes are pretty good, ni nice and even. Uh, 2.35 ratio, that's kind of nice. Look at uh, variable importance. Good, both variables were used um, to determine clusters. Go over here, go to clusters. <clears throat> now, let's see, expand this a little bit. A couple things we need to do. First, you'll notice that the cluster numbers are not in order. It goes four, one, two, three. It's because because it's because they're um, <clears throat> ordered in with regards to their sample size, or the, the size of the cluster. So this one has 127, this one 62, 62, 54. So they're ordered in that way. You can change that by clicking on this little icon down here. So now they're ordered 1, 2, 3, 4. That's pretty convenient. Next thing, I want to display also the evaluation variable. Oh, bother. There it is, burnout. You have to click the evaluation fields checkbox and hit OK. And you'll notice that that just gets added down here at the bottom. So once again, burnout was not used to create the clusters, but we can now see the level of burnout for these different um, clusters. Okay, to, to view a cluster, you click on the very top where it says number one. And we can see over here on the right, let me scoot this over a bit, that this cluster is those who are not satisfied. So they're pretty unhappy at work, but they're still pretty productive. Uh, this is a box plot, and so the line represents the median, and then the uh, size of the box represents something like uh, one standard deviation from the mean on either side. Um, and so it looks like very unsatisfied, but fairly productive, and very burnt out. Yeah, that makes sense. Cluster 2, we have uh, fairly unsatisfied, but not productive at all, and really burnt out. So whether you work hard or not, I guess, uh, if you're not satisfied, you're going to be burnt out. Here are the ones that are really satisfied, love their job, but they're not very productive. And they're not very burnt out, so they're just sort of kicking back and taking it easy at work. And then you have those that are satisfied and are very productive, and they're not burnt out at all. These are your golden employees. These are the guys you love. These are the ones that you'll probably punish by making them managers. 
Anyway, so there we go. We can see these meaningful clusters. Go ahead and close that, and you can see, let me close this as well. You can see on the very right side, the very uh, oh, furthest extent in your data set, you have these TSC uh, variables. That's something about clusters. And you can see in this one we have 4, 3, 2, 1. It's a, it's a 1 to 4 range. It's the cluster membership number. So respondent 1 belongs to cluster 4. Respondent 2 belongs to cluster 3, etc. You can now use this um, in ANOVAs as a factoring variable, or you can use it in AMOS when you're doing um, structural equation modeling. You can use this just as you would use any other multi-group moderating variable, like gender or job category. I'll show you how to do it in here with uh, ANOVA. You would go to something like compare means, ANOVA, and here are these things, productivity, job satisfaction, burnout. Now that's not good because I'm using these in <laughs> the clusters, but I can do burnout, um, and my factor will be that cluster number down there, and hit OK, and it looks like uh, with regards to these clusters, they do differ with regards to burnout. Um, they don't all have the same level of burnout, so very interesting. You could also test it in an AMOS model. I hope this has been helpful. If you want to learn how to test it in an AMOS model, go watch my other video on multi-group moderation in AMOS. All right.